All right, so this is a presentation called Create a Secure RESTful API Gateway for your PowerShell scripts. And it's kind of built around uh, a module I work on called RESTPS. It's out in the PowerShell gallery. You can download it today. And a little bit about me. Uh, my name's Justin Sider. I work for a company called Belay Technologies. Uh, pr pretty much my day-to-day, -day, uh, I'm an operations manager. We do automated testing. Uh, so basically people can bring us software and then we throw that software into our test range. We, we automate all of that and then we give them a report back. Kind of boring, but it, it works really well. Uh, I've been in the IT field for 18 plus years. I've been working with PowerShell for 12 to 13. Uh, different from probably most of you, I grew up through the PowerCLI community. So all my PowerShell experience comes from working with VMware, guest operations, executing on uh, all of the VMware stack of tools. Uh, so I never really read like a month of lunches or really attended any training. So kind of a different, different upbringing than, uh, than most of you guys. Uh, I'm, just some fun facts about me. I'm a certified U.S. soccer coach and soccer referee. So if you ever want to talk about VAR or how it's ruined the game, let me know. Uh, I'm, about to move <laughs> I'm about to move from uh, Maryland to Texas. So uh, I've actually never moved before in my life. I've lived in the same house since 1993. Uh, so that's going to be a big change for me. I love to golf, and uh, along with my VMware upbringing, I never actually really used the ISE. I was the guy who always installed Notepad++ uh, wherever I went. So uh, if you find some Windows servers with Notepad++, that was me. Sorry about that. Where are you in Maryland? Uh, I am in between Annapolis and Baltimore. Okay, I'm in County. Very nice. So I'm a little bit south, play a lot of soccer up there. All right, so today uh, I'm going to show you the end first. I'm going to show you where we're going to be, uh, and then we'll go back and kind of kind of work our way to it. Uh, we'll give you an overview of RESTPS. We'll go step by step through the demo. I'll show you the end again, uh, and then I'll show you example A, B, and C. It was going to be one, two, and three, but this slide deck, I don't like the number one. So it's kind of bothering me. All right, here's where we're trying to get to. So. As, as a person who writes a lot of PowerShell, and uh, primarily my job is interacting with REST interfaces. So uh, whether it be a VMware interface, whether it be some Java application, I'm always reaching out to the, all these services uh, using PowerShell. So inv invoke REST method or invoke web request. And I think it's great. But what I wanted to do is kind of flip the table, right? So I really like the idea that I just use a web request to get information, and then I can do continue on in my script. One of the things I hated about VMware was I had to log into a vCenter and then run my command and then log out of a vCenter, right? So that, from a timer perspective, takes a long time. Uh, little fact about me, I manage about 80 vCenters in my, in my data center. So logging in and out of 80 vCenters over a period of time would probably take a couple hours. So I needed a faster way, I needed a better way. Um, so I found online there was a couple ways you could wrap uh, HTTP listener and, and that's what we'll get to in a couple seconds. But here's what we're doing, right? I have an incoming HTTP request. I have my RESTPS running on a host, and then I'm going to authorize and authenticate that request, make sure that it's actually valid. I'm going to determine what route I need to take to execute. Route just really means a path. I'm going to execute that script, and then I'm going to return the, the body of that script or the return of that script back to the user through the web request. Sounds pretty simple. Pretty straightforward, you're now a developer. All right, so RESTPS, it is open source. Contributions are welcome. Uh, I get one or two a year from people as they use it. I, I would love to take more. So the good stuff is it uh, wraps the .NET HTTP framework, so we're not doing anything crazy. Uh, if you ever look at the module, you actually see that it's mostly PowerShell with a little bit of .NET calls into it, nothing crazy. Um, the routes are really just paths to scripts that you get to define, and it's all in JSON. So I'll pull that up when we go through the demo part. Yes, it works on Linux. Uh, in my environment, I have it running inside of containers. So it works on uh, PowerShell 6, and it works on PowerShell 7. Uh, today's demo is all 5.1. I have a nice new laptop, uh, and I haven't installed PowerShell 7 yet. So you're going to get a 5.1 demo. Uh, the bad is it's single-threaded. I have not figured out how to multi-thread the requests as they come in, handle another request, and then get the order back right. So uh, if anybody wants uh, some late night homework, let me know. Uh, the other thing is uh, someone just recently put a uh, request in for dynamic URLs. 
So I don't know how to best describe it, but basically we put a variable inside the path of the URL. Uh, right now, the way that the routes file is defined, uh, it can't handle two of the same path. Uh, it'll, it'll bomb out and then you won't be happy. And then finally, the login really sucks uh, to the point that there really is none, right? So you're really just looking at console output. So whether it be in a container or whether it be on, on the machine you'll see today, uh, the login is just printed out to the screen. Uh, and the issue I had with that was when you execute a script that's in the same console. So I could probably get away with this with run spaces. Um, so thank you for your uh, presentation the other day, Mark. I'll, uh, I'm gonna dig into it a little bit. But the problem is the return from the script, if you do any logging, uh, it would also bundle all of the log messages with the return. So even if I just wanted to return one, you'd get all the logging from RESTPS with the, like, the number one. So it's kind of goofy. Um, and then general UK use cases, why do I do this? Um, CRUD, right, so anytime I want to get information, I want to update something, uh, I can use this via REST, so now I'm using similar tool sets that I'm using across the rest of my enterprise. Uh, integration testing, so if you ever write uh, power or pester tests uh, and you're interacting with a remote API, like now you can spoof that, right? So you can use RESTPS, you can stand up your own REST interface, you can spoof all of the endpoints that you're interacting with, and it gives you a little bit better integration testing instead of just mocking that out. Uh, and then uh, random cool stuff. I'll show you something at the end that I did for uh, my kid's school. That was pretty cool, a hit on uh, career day. All right, so step by step. Today we are going to start RESTPS. We're gonna do a non-HTTPS request just so you can kind of see how it works. Uh, we'll review some certificate stuff. I'm not gonna run that because I've already ran it on my machine uh, and I don't wanna mess up the demo. So. Uh, then, then we will use the certificate that we reviewed and we will start up an HTTP endpoint. We will add some additional security measures such as validating that the client has a cert signed by the same CA. We will add uh, or check them for the fact they are on a CRL. And then we will add in like a password or a token so you can you know, have different layers of security, right? How you get that information is gonna be up to you uh, and I provide examples in the module. Uh, and then we'll collect uh, profit. All right, so here's, here's what our demo looks like. I apologize, I don't really have any fancy slides and that looks terrible on this screen. Uh, the green big thing is my laptop. Inside the laptop, I have a client console and a server console. So we are going to initiate the client console over to the server console, right, just local host on a port. It will then look up the uh, routes in the JSON file. Once it looks up the routes, we'll do a security check. Once we validate that we are good security-wise, if we've entered that as a parameter, we will run the endpoint script and then return the information back, number five. Pretty simple. All right, let's break out of this. I was trying to figure out the best way to do this and I don't know that there really is. So I'm gonna kind of walk through it uh, as best as I can. So RESTPS, we have a bunch of different parameters that you can set so you can, oh crap. Windows P, good thing we have enough time. Duplicate. Ah, much better. Can you, I, I don't know that I'm gonna be able to make it any bigger though. That's gonna be bad. Is it at least clear? It is, I don't know that I can make it too much better. A little better? I think that's where we're gonna leave it. Yeah, move forward, please. All right, uh, so I pulled out the, uh, the help and I kind of put it in a really weird format so you can see. Uh, you can spec so when you set up, start up an endpoint, you can specify a port, an SSL thumbprint, a local uh, path for where all of your endpoint scripts are going to live. Uh, you're gonna have an app GUID that's only required if you need the SSL thumbprint. And then you have a verification type. Those can be with or without the certificate and then finally the routes file path. Uh, other note, the other modules I've used today is JP Cider, that's me. Um, I have a couple little shortcut uh, commands that I use. And then Carbon, Carbon is a module that can deal with certificates and bindings and stuff like that. So the first thing I say, so you can actually walk through this, all of this stuff will be available to you guys, it's in my repo and then we'll have to upload it to the uh, conference re repository as well. So, 
The first thing we say is open up two consoles, so I've already done that, and then we will name them. I'm gonna make sure I try and do this right. So we have a rest con or a server console and then we have a client console. You can see that the names have changed so I don't confuse myself later. So the first thing I wanna do, even though I know that I haven't actually ran anything, I'm just gonna copy all three of these guys. I'm gonna make sure that I don't have any existing bindings, otherwise it's gonna screw us up later. And there's nothing there. So that's good. All right, I've already imported the module and I've already deployed. So the deploy will actually take all the files, the example files I have in the module itself from the module root wherever you install that and it'll drop it onto C temp or C colon rest PS. Um, so I do that for you so you don't have to worry about, you know, copying and pasting that stuff. It's pretty cool, pretty easy. And now we will start up the first endpoint. All right, so we did not select SSL. Can I make this one bigger too? Nope, all right. So there's just some log in there saying that, hey, I see that you've started it, here's the path, here's the port we're listening on. Um, and now any, any time that we send in a request, you're gonna start to see more logging kind of go through that. So that's why I have it to kind of split screen. All right, so the first thing is, just to show you that uh, it is an actual valid web request, I am going to just use invoke web request. So there's my parameters. I'm saying, hey, oh, you know what? I didn't show you the uh, routes file. I guess that would be helpful. Slide this guy over. All right, so here is an example routes file. So basically what you're telling uh, my module or the, the engine is what type of request it is, what that URL or that route's going to be, and then whatever the request command is. So the nice thing about the request command is that it can actually be a PowerShell script block or it can be a path to a script. So you can see for status, I just return one, and you can see that actually process and this, pro so proc and process actually end up doing the same thing. I just have one in a script and one is a, a script block. So pretty basic for the most part. So you get to define all of those guys. Let me go back. If I, well, technically, if I'm doing a gateway, I would probably put like Nginx in front of it, right? So gateway is, I guess, uh, a, a relative term, right? So for me, gateway means I'm coming in and now I have access to all of my scripts, right? So RESTPS has given me access to all of these different scripts. All right, so I've given my parameters. I'm saying, hey, go to localhost, go to this port that I've already set up, and now I'm going to use basic, par use basic parsing, and it's a method of get. I'm gonna execute this, and you'll see that you get the full response. So you saw a bunch of stuff go on in the uh, server console. It's telling me, hey, I get to see where this uh, script came in. You get to see what the parameters are. You get to see what the path is. Um, again, I don't actually write that anywhere, but it's cool to know that it actually knows what's going on. Um, and then in the bottom, you get to see that, you know, we did have a valid request. We have a status code 200. Um, it gives me all of the content, so I'll, I'll go back to the content again. You can see that it's an HTTP request, uh, and you get to see all the raw stuff, right? But no one ever uses, does anyone actually use invoke web request? A nah, little bit, like, I only use it for like troubleshooting, like when, I, when I've really screwed something up. Um, so now we can take a look at the uh, content, so. and now it just gives me the processes that are running on my box, right? So you're gonna see all the different PowerShell processes and I, I asked for the window titles and the process IDs, right? So from, oh, dang it. from my perspective, right, <laughs> as I'm, I'm looking out over, right, envision that you're, you have a bunch of machines out there, right? You have cattle out there. Uh, you know what their IPs are. You can start up RESTPS on them and now you can invoke a REST method to go out and find what's going on on, their, on those machines and now you can, you can also write a, you know, a little script and send another REST message and say, kill this process or kill that, kill that process or install whatever application, right? I'm not saying this is a replacement for say Puppet or Chef or Salt, but for me it was a very useful tool and you'll see my use cases a little bit further along. Um, 
and then let's see. So invoke rest method obviously is a little bit better and we'll make the output look nicer. And now if it has a console title, you get to see it. Let me. So it looks a little bit better. Uh, again, returning, you know, just the information that I need, it's formatted in a table. So for me, this, this looks a little bit better using invoke rest method. All right, and then uh, if, you know, the real test here is what does it look like in a web browser? Because you can actually, uh, one, of the, one of the guys I have that uses the module actually returns HTML web pages. So you can actually pull it up, it'll launch a browser, and you get the same information back that you would get using any other HTTP website, right? It's just a JSON, it's Firefox rendering JSON, it's not pretty, but uh, imagine, you know, you, instead of returning a JSON object, you return an HTML object, and now you can have a full HTML report available from whatever the machine is or whatever you got going on there. Hooray. Uh, let's see, uh, looking at status. So this was one of those other endpoints. It just gives me a return of one, right? So one of the things that I'm doing across my enterprise or across my machines, I have, have these guys running and I have another alternative process that's going out and just checking that they're up. And if they're not up, it'll go out and restart them, right? So just a quick little status check. And then I also wrote this one. This one's included with it. This one will tell you what your routes are that are available. So this basically prints back that JSON file and says, here are the routes that are available on this endpoint. So it's included, free of charge. All right, and then we can shut this guy down just by hitting the shutdown endpoint. So that's not actually in the routes file path, it's built into the module itself. So anytime you send endpoint shutdown and you have the right permissions, you'll get to shut that down. All right, any questions so far? Cool. All right, certificates. Anybody like certificates? Okay, I didn't think so. Um, so for this demo, what I've done is I've created a CA on my machine and then created certs off of that CA so that I can kind of mimic what you would en envision out in the real world. So it was a learning curve for me because I've never actually like used PowerShell to like create certificates or really done it locally on, on my own machine, right? I have Linux for that. So it was exciting. Um, let's see, so we're gonna create a CA, we're gonna create a, uh, cert for the REST client or the REST server and then we're gonna have a client cert and then for uh, demo purposes I also created a bad cert. So the first thing is we go ahead and create the uh, root CA so it's all splatted so it looks nice. Uh, it gives you the key length, RSA, whoop, it's exportable uh, and then the usage is important. Um, one of the nice things I like about splatting is that you can actually do in comment so you know what the heck you're doing. Uh, and then so I ran all this Vaporware, got it. Uh, the other thing that we do is we add it to the certificate store, right? So it wasn't just good enough that we created it, we now need to put that into the certificate store so that the machine knows that it exists. Uh, the next thing is now that we've created the root CA, I can use that, so I captured that. I don't know if you caught that. So when I went to create it, I actually captured it as a variable. So now when I'm going down below and I go to create the REST server PowerShell demo IO cert, I actually use the signer as root CA. Uh, so I create that certifi certificate, and then I do the same thing for my demo client, and then I do the same thing for my bad client, right? And that's gonna come in with that, uh, the CRL. Uh, we can go in and we can look at these guys real quick. So you can see I have, man, this is terrible, I'm sorry. This is what I get for uh, using PowerShell 5.1. All right, so it has all four servers there. So you see the root CA, you have the server cert, the client cert, and the bad cert. So we'll, we'll use all those in a few minutes here. Um, and then you can also see that in the root certificates, uh, you're not gonna like this either, this is gonna be kind of crappy, let's see. Whoops, wrong one. So it, you know, it gives me a whole long list of all the things in the root CA, which is not really useful. So now I can just filter out and see that my PowerShell demo cert is in the root trust. So that's gonna be good for us. All right. So now, right, so 
a couple years ago I had a talk and I was like, oh, I don't care about security, this, that, the other, but now I guess I apparently care about security. So we're getting, we had, the first uh, go round was all HTTP, right? So it was just open, there was no security. Um, so now we're gonna kind of walk through each stage just to make sure that all the security folks in the room are happy. Um, so the first thing we need to do in the, in the uh, server console is load up the cert so that I have access to it. So now I have a cert in a variable. Uh, let me see, I can scroll that out. And basically I'm just doing a match, right? Give me all the certificates that are in my local machine and then I do a, a search on the subject. Super easy. Um, this little error is just something that I haven't been able to fix yet, but it still works. All right. So now we're starting RESTPS, we have a routes file path, and then we have a thumbprint. We're starting it up with a thumbprint uh, of that certificate. So it's all good. So we grab the, th the thumbprint from the certificate, and then we start it up. We're still running on 8080. Good to go. All right, so now we're here. It says it's on 8080, and you'll notice that the, uh, the log output says HTTPS, not HTTP. Uh, what you didn't see is that if I didn't assign an app GUID, it actually auto-creates an app GUID just by running a quick little command. Uh, that's required for the binding. All right, and then, all right, switching to the client console. So I did put in these little comments so you can make sure if you actually try to run through this demo, you know when to switch between each of them. So I'm gonna load up both certs. I'm only gonna use one. All right, so first thing, right? So we set up a HTTPS client or server. So now we're gonna try an HTTP method. Anyone think it's gonna work? <laughs> it does not, right? So it tells me I can't set up a secure connection. Uh, connection was closed, right? So immediately the, the RESTPS or the HTTP listener rejects it because it wants HTTPS. So that's good. So what we'll do is we'll just update that URL, send it back, and it should work, right? <laughs> Wrong. Uh. All right, so uh, part of the issue is that like we don't really trust this, right? So we have to basically disable SSL validation because even though I created the cert, it's on my root trust, I still don't actually trust the certificate, right? It's not a, it's not a trusted certificate, which I don't really re completely understand. So I have a uh, little uh, script here that, or a function that actually is included with RESTPS. It's called disable SSL validation and it makes everything work in, when you actually uh, paste it in the right window. All right, now it's gonna work. Yes! All right, so again, same thing. We, it's just giving us the same uh, output that we did when we did the HTTPS or HTTP, now we're doing HTTPS, so now I don't wanna, you know, this is false security, this isn't really security, it's just uh, that you would see encrypted traffic, but it's not really preventing, it, right, any user can actually access this right now, right, if they know that it's available. Um, and just to show you that I'm not crazy, we'll do this, uh, we'll pop it open in Firefox again. It tells me that it's not trusted, right? This is the same thing that we got before. And we get the same information, right? So we just switch from HTTP to HTTPS and it all works, yay. All right, we're gonna shut this guy down. Oops, wrong one. All right, so the next piece that we're gonna do is we're gonna add in like the first layer of security um, and this is called verifying the root CA. So now what's gonna happen is you will not be able to access this endpoint unless you present a valid client certificate, right? Now, I wanna be clear, I created a bad cert and a client cert. Both of these will work in this instance because I'm just validating that the certificate was signed by the same CA. So let's get this guy started back up. Good. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go at the uh, endpoint and we will not have a certificate at all. So it's still trying to hit HTTPS. And I got nothing. Dang it. All right, so we said 8080. You should be giving me a 401. Did I not get something? Oh boy. 
but that's no fun. Man. Doesn't matter how many times you roll through it, right? All right, let's try something different. Bummer. All right, so I'm going to go back up and grab the certificate. Go back down. Verify root CA. Let's see if it'll let me start one up. Okay, it doesn't like it because I never removed the binding. So we'll try it again on 8081. All right, so all I've done is set up another one on 8081, and we'll see if 8081 works. Otherwise, I'm completely busted. It's interesting. So it comes up and says validating client. So like it actually received the request and then does nothing. Right with a cert. No response. Ugh. Love troubleshooting live. Ah, you know what? I copied both of these. This isn't going to work. I switched the server to 881. Still get nothing. I wonder if it's because I have it open. Nope, browser's killed. You mentioned that it was single thread, so I'm wondering if there's like a maybe a powerful process. Let's kill them all. Kill them all. Something goofy went on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I did this locally on my laptop so I wouldn't have any issues. It would have been way cooler if it was like in Azure or with something else. Come on. Uh, and home. So let's go back to verify root CA. console, we need the certificates. Sorry about this. All right, verify root CA. It's very quiet in here now. Nope, it's stuck up, hung up on my script. So it's definitely hung up. I don't know why it's hung up on that. Let's move on. All right. I'm right, looking at the remote server here, and it crap. Move past that one. Let's try this one. All right, so I'm skipping the validating certificate and let's see if we can get any usernames working. Put it on 8084. It 
does not like that script. Ugh. Bless my heart. I have no idea why that script is not working. Fair enough. All right. Well, that kind of is going to save us a little bit of time today because uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to walk through some of this stuff without uh, it actually working. So I'm going to have to go back and figure out why that was not working. Um, but basically, there's a script that validates the client, so it's going to go in and inspect the thumbprint and the certificate that was used to start the REST endpoint with the client requesting. So it compares that. There's another script that we were going to get to that would check on a, uh, a ACL, right? Here's a list of good users, uh, and these are the users that will allow, you, know, you, can, you will allow, and if you're not on that list, we re res uh, restrict access. So uh, I leave that up to you, right? So I provide uh, helper scripts, and then you can do what you want with them. Um, so let's see. Nope, didn't mean to open that one. Oh, this will work. So in the, in the bin directory, we have git rest ACL list. So it's an example of what to do, right? Mine's really basic. I just have a hard-coded hard set of users. But this script could go out and inspect your AD. You could go do whatever you needed to do. Um, uh, a user asked uh, for checking IPs, so you can limit by IP. Um, user authentication, you know, I just did a basic username password, but you could go out and inspect AD, get their password, compare the hash, whatever you wanted to do there. Um, this is the script that was killing me. Um, so I'll have to go figure out why that isn't working. You know, I'd probably just reboot my machine and it'll work fine, as is what I imagine. We don't have time for all that today. Um, verifying the root CA, so this is uh, comparing, doing that comparison between uh, the certificate that's presented and the certificate that was started for the uh, endpoint. Verifying the subject, takes out the actual CN, compares that to your ACL list. Um, and then the user authentication uses the REST user auth script that's up here to check that we see that the password matches. So, sorry about the epic failure. <laughs> All right, let's go back to this real quick. All right. So here's the end again, right? We have an incoming HTTP request. It goes to the REST host. We inspect the request for whether or not that user should have access, should not have access. We determine the route. We run the uh, script, and then we return the data back to the user through the HTTP means. Um, what I've used this for, uh, as I said before, I have a bunch of vCenters. So I'm the client. I have some script that needs to loop through all 80 of my vCenters. So I have a Windows server, and then I just have a script that'll set up, you know, one through 80, uh, 80 different ports. Uh, the REST PS will then go out during the uh, startup script, and it'll connect to a, its own vCenter. And then I can quickly loop through all of the vCenters and run, run the execution command. So if I need to get a VM, if I need to power a VM off, if I'm searching for something across 80 different vCenters that are not in linked mode, by the way, uh, I, can, I can do it quickly through this. That I, and I don't have to log in and out, right, because the, the web traffic is super fast. Uh, the other example I have is a monitoring service that I wrote. So I, the core of my software is written in Java, and uh, it uses Spring Boot. So what I do is I set up uh, a little AMP server, so Windows, Apache, MySQL, uh, and PHP, or LAMP, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so that houses all of my data, and then I have a worker that is running RESTPS. The RESTPS server connects to my external application, and then I have two long-running scripts that collect data from the AMP server, and then come back and hit the, X or the RESTPS server that says go out and see is this uh, application up, is it healthy? Is it running the desired version that's stored in the database? Um, and all that's proxied through Nginx. Additionally, the client can go to my web server and initiate individual requests through Nginx to the REST server to go out and get specific information on demand. Right? So even, even though it's still single-threaded, like you can still do things like this uh, and, and get the desired uh, results. All right. Uh, the last one uh, that I'm going to show you is I made a matchmaker for my kid's school. So I had two Raspberry Pis. I installed Linux distro on each one of those. I was running RESTPS. And what would happen is I had uh, the web interface. I would hit go. 
Uh, and when it hit go, it hit another REST PS server that was running on my laptop. That had a script to go out to both of the Raspberry Pis. So the kids, all right, so I, I did a really poor job of explaining this. So the concept was we had two kids come up, they put their fingers on a temperature probe, and then I compare the temperature as to whether or not they're compatible or not, right? So it, it was cheesy and it was fun, but it was a really fun career day. So the kids come up, and then I hit enter on my keyboard or refresh or whatever it was. Uh, the, the PHP goes out, hits my REST interface, the script goes out, gathers the temperature for both endpoints, comes back, compares the temperature. If it was in, within a degree, they were a match. Um, and if it wasn't, they were not a match. Uh, this is actually of uh, this good result. I know you can't really see it. I tried to find screenshots, but I don't have it. This, this code is available, by the way. It's on GitHub, too. Um, my daughter and the kid across the street, and they were like always like, oh, I don't like you. Well, this proved that they li did like each other. Um, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so right now, this is where all of this code sits. Um, on the GitHub, there's instructions on how to get started. This is probably the most in-depth demo for uh, all the SSL stuff. Uh, I will go back and figure out why my script was hanging up, because that's embarrassing. But uh, other than that, if you have any questions, I'll be hanging out. And uh, we got out here a couple minutes early, if you like. There's a... Uh, <laughs> thank you.